appreciated. Hi, folks. Thanks for joining us. My name is Fred Sala. I'm the chief scientist here at Snorkel AI. I'm also a faculty member at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Um, and I've been involved with the Snorkel project since back in its inception. Really excited to join all of you folks today and talk a little bit about what we call enterprise alignment. All right, let's dive in. So first, we'll talk about why we care about enterprise alignment and why you should care. And just in a nutshell, a one-line definition of what enterprise alignment is, is simple. We take alignment, which is really very broadly about AI systems that are safe and comply with policies. And we want to make sure we can do these for business, enterprise, organization level settings. Um, before we talk about enterprise alignment, here's a very, very short introduction to alignment more broadly. So basically, the idea of alignment is to make sure that our AI systems, and by these we mean kind of very generally systems that might involve a large language model component, but not only, we want to make sure that they operate consistent with the kind of things that we'd like to have as humans. That means we'd like them to take our instructions. That means we want them to have the same goals as us. That means we want them to behave according to our values. It means we'd like to satisfy, for example, ethical considerations. It means that as a society, our norms should also be encoded in these systems, and they should behave in a way consistent with them. It also basically means that we'd like to prevent them from exhibiting harmful behavior and to make sure that we promote beneficial types of behaviors. And just as a kind of very short note, there is this simple triple H definition that we often use. We'd like these AI systems to be helpful, to be honest, and not to do harm. And what we mean here by harm are things like we want to make sure that these systems don't produce toxic behavior, don't produce biased or unfair outcomes. So all of these things are kind of things that we'd like to be able to ensure with our AI systems just very broadly. And to make it a bit more concrete, many of the systems we're talking about they interact with users by taking instructions. And it's possible to kind of present very harmful instructions. And in those cases, what we'd like our system to be able to do is at the very least to refuse to answer those kinds of instructions. Now, the reason why alignment has become such a powerful kind of idea is that in the past, a lot of our focus was on predictive systems, in which case we could always use metrics like, for example, accuracy to gauge how high quality our predictive systems were for particular tasks. But as we started working more and more with things like large language models or generative AI more broadly, in that case, we really have to deal with kind of other metrics that are not as simple as predictive accuracy and are more tracking the behaviors and the outcomes of these models. So this is why alignment has become a major area. It's extremely important, both in practical applications of AI systems, but also in the research space as well. So this was all a very, very short introduction to alignment more generally. Now we'll make this more specific to enterprise settings for AI systems. And what this basically means is that we want AI systems that are functioning within organizations or companies to be consistent with kind of similar things. So the goals of the company, the ethical standards of the particular area the organization is in. And of course, very importantly, we'd like to make sure that these systems satisfy regulatory requirements. So this means that for enterprise alignment, we're going to build on the general alignment setting, but we're going to have a lot more complexity to deal with all of these things within the enterprise space. And this is something that we're going to apply both to internal applications, so AI-powered systems that help employees, but also to external client-facing applications as well. We would like, for example, an LLM-powered system to refuse a non-compliant employee request. So we might have some policy, and this policy is going to specify exactly what is an acceptable and unacceptable request. We want to make sure that our LLM-powered system is going to be able to refuse all those requests that are not compliant with a policy. OK, so how does this actually look? Basically, whenever we use large language models, large pre-trained models and other such systems kind of within our enterprise settings, we often have these fairly complex pipelines. We typically cannot use these just directly out of the box. Instead, we have to build a larger set of guardrails for them. And here's just one very simple example of such a pipeline. We'll typically have a user, and we'll have to authenticate that user to make sure they're authorized to use the system. They'll craft an initial prompt that will ultimately get sent to a language model. 
before it gets sent, it has to be sanitized, it has to be classified. We might even have it interact with a retrieval augmented generation system, and that will put it in a position to retrieve external data as well. And all of these things will be used to create a final prompt that gets sent to a language model. We'll want this language model to be aligned with the specific definition of enterprise alignment we've been getting at. We'll have it produce a response for us, and then at the other end, we'll also have to sanitize these responses before we have the final output that it'll produce. So there's a good bit of complexity here, and that's going to drive a lot of our approaches for making sure that these systems are indeed aligned in our sense of enterprise alignment. And as we'll see, this is going to bring up a bunch of challenges. Some of these things are challenges that we face with alignment more generally, but a lot of them are going to be specific to this enterprise alignment setting. And really what's very unique about the setting and what makes things quite hard is the fact that a lot of our requirements, preferences, and kind of general policies will shift over time. And this is something that's very true within a very dynamic enterprise setting. And it's much less true typically for alignment in other situations. And the reason why this is a big challenge is really getting into kind of the details of how we perform alignment. But very roughly, any alignment approach will typically have two components. One is an actual algorithmic technique that will make the language model or other model actually be aligned. But the other component, which is often the bottleneck, is going to be the data that we use for alignment. And this data is often crafted manually, typically by subject matter experts who know exactly what's going to be aligned against. Now, this is a very expensive process. Unfortunately, alignment data sets are few and far in between, and they're often not at a huge scale, precisely because of the cost of crafting and developing that much data. It's a very, very intensive process. Now, the trouble for enterprise alignment, too, is that every time there's some change, every time there's a policy that has to be updated, every time we want to shift some requirement, it means that we have to restart this process, create and develop more data, and reperform the alignment procedure. So this is kind of a very large amount of complexity, and this data issue becomes really a prohibitive aspect of enterprise alignment. Now, here at Snorkel, we've pioneered a lot of aspects of automating data development. We call a lot of these approaches programmatic techniques or programmatic approaches. They're far more efficient. We've done these successfully dating back quite a while in other settings like supervised learning. But we believe, and we're really excited to share results that show that this is also the right way to unlock enterprise alignment capabilities as well. 